Welcome to sunny Winter Haven, Florida. I'm Lane Dog Bowers, and this is another installment of my free virtual ski school that I'm doing the entire time we're in quarantine. So this video is going to go over some backward stuff, but if you want me to do a free video analysis, some free uh, coaching, all you have to do is send an email to thefootersedge at gmail.com and then put the subject line free virtual ski school then below put a link to a high quality video don't send me a video can't see don't send me a video i gotta download send me a link make it easy Just put it on youtube put it on vimeo send me the link and then i want you to very specifically tell me what you want me to do and look at in your video all right so today we're talking about a good client of mine I'll just his name's Greg and we've got his video here and he says good afternoon kind sir I still find myself struggling to get into the power band glide perhaps fear out of the crash again and skiing defensively surviving while looking like a hunchback I'm not sure if my planned rotator cuff surgery is postponed or not but my goal is to be behind the boat and long line backwards he means backwards if I am skiing this summer Without sucking up too much, I will say your tips are very <laughs> beneficial and appreciated. Sucking up is allowed. Uh, the attached video is free to use as you like. Uh, you upload or Vimeo. Uh, he makes mention here, which is kind of helpful. Uh, he's six foot one, two hundred and sixty pounds, and the speed is at thirty-eight miles an hour. So first, let's take. I'm going to put this off to the side. Let's take a look at Greg's barefooting. Now, first of all, I want to show you something. Number one, and I'll put a magnifier on my thing. Greg gets bonus points because he has a very cool looking dog over here, which he also ha has uh, all over Instagram. This dog watching as a spotter is bonus points, okay? And uh, so anyway, I gotta, I gotta say that. Uh, and number two, before I even look at this video, I can see that we got a problem. He, Greg, you're videoing, it, you got it. You probably got some kind of suction cup or something holding your GoPro, I assume. And here's the, uh, you got your driver's elbow right there. But I want to show you a huge tip. And for anyone else out there, look at this, you guys. This is a GoPro clamp. It's not that expensive. Look at how, this thing is jaws of life powerful right there. And that will attach to your boom. You can put your GoPro on the end of it and look at this thing. Now what I do as a quick tip is even though this thing is rock solid and you can probably put it on the second section of uh, his boom right there or you, it, it might, I think it might fit right here too. I still duct tape it because I don't want to lose this. But anyway, this is super powerful because what's going to happen here, I've already watched this video, is right at the critical point where I need to analyze uh, the power band position, what he wants me to, to help him with this boom is right in the way. So that's a quick tip for you, Greg. So here we go. Greg's got his feet in the water. He takes a pretty hot pull, uh, which I remember he loves that. He hates if I pull him too slowly. He's barefoot with me. Now watch here. We're looking, and what he's talking about, you can't tell um, because this boom is really blocking his shoulder roll and meat hook. Um, but I've gone over that a lot with him. But what the power band is this section right here where your hips it, it's basically through your core of your abs your hip flex and your core your low back as well now because i'm stuck on this screen like this as a bonus i went outside just for you guys filmed an entirely separate cheat sheet video on how to get in it's a two minute video i'm going to share that resource with you but well in fact let me show you real quickly if you go to the foot first of all you know what i gotta let's let's get let's get something straight here all right i love sharing with you guys but do me a favor if you guys like this free information if you think my time that i'm donating to you is valuable to you personally please do me a favor and share this information with someone else so what, what I want you to do is, if you guys aren't on my free video, uh, if you guys aren't getting these by email, I mean, I, I put it all over social media and anything, do me a favor, go to thefootersedge.com. That's my site up here, thefootersedge.com. I'll show you. Well, let's, let's go do it real quick. 
And I know for some of you that's boring, but that's just the way it works. I want you guys to help me help other people as well. Go to thefootersedge.com and then just simply scroll down, enter your name and email right here, and you're going to get my free ebook. Look at this. Where is it? It's around here somewhere. Oh, right here. Free ebook. How to be the best barefooter on your lake. Okay, it's free. It's packed with awesome stuff. I can't say it enough. It's so awesome. It's worth thousands of dollars uh, in the amount of time and pain that it's got to learn all this stuff and then give it away to you for free. So do me a favor. Go to there. Once you're in, there's all. one of the best things you can do is simply go to the top, click on blog, and here's some of the cool resources I want to share with you. I just uploaded a video how to get into the power band. And this is, forget all my blah, blah, blah talking. You literally come right here and say, Lane, just show me the video. How do you get into it? Bam, hit play and whammo. Right on the end of my dock. I made this for you guys just today. All it is is me explaining how to get into the power band position. So I can't stand up here and show you, so I made it easy for you. And I made an entire article on the power band and how the power band releases your barefoot awesomeness. That's also going out in my newsletter. Get in, share it with somebody else. And that's those resources are gonna help you so much. So now let's get back to let's get back to Greg here. All right, so what we're trying to get with Greg is now watch this. Let's finish, let's watch this a little bit. We'll just watch the whole thing through. I won't chop it up so you guys can see. If you look no, I won't, I won't press anything yet. There's a little bit, you know, the water's not perfect, but it's it's good enough. Greg's a super solid barefooter. He's got great resistance, by the way. What he wants to improve is he wants to feel like he's not going to get pulled out the back, okay? So the way we do that is one of the first tips I can tell you. I'm going to show you the, the shortcut here. I'll bring over my little cheat sheet here for you. Number one. Okay, I told you guys, go to the Footer's Edge, do me a favor, refer a friend to me, and here's, uh, I even spell it out in the, the link that I'm going to send you guys. All you got to do is copy and paste it into an email. So here's my tips. Number one, slow down. Greg hates it when I tell him that. He always wants to go faster because he believes he's going to fall. And I get it. I totally get it. He, you know, 38 feels comfortable for him, and a lot of you guys are going, wait a minute, 38, he's 200 and 60 pounds, I mean, that seems totally fine with me. It is, but what's happening is, it's one of the things that we got to work on, I'll show you here, I'm going to stop the video, is when he gets up, I want to show you something. He knows this, he wants to improve his glide. Well, it's hard to improve your glide if you think you're going to fall. I'm trying to find a good shot of, let me see if I can get it. What, what, see, whenever you see spray shooting out in front, that could be a little bit of rough water, but you can see on this foot, it's really shooting out in front. It can't shoot out in front unless it's hitting like his foot is at an angle. Instead of being more of a glide, it's like this. So you, it's a two-edged sword. He feels like his heel could drop if he slows down his, uh, it slows down the boat speed. But what I'm saying is if you take it down, and I think I've done this exact same thing with him as well as thousands of other people, is if you can't, you know, you want to do it a little bit at a time. If 38 feels like his most comfortable speed, try your next run at 37. See if you can do that without falling. Try, And he's, by the way, really smart here. Is he did a run and let go. Even his driver told him, let go. You can see the hand come out. Excellent. You guys got to get really good at doing a run and getting out on your own without <laughs> on your own choice instead of barefoot until you fall. So very smart of Greg there. Um, number one, I'd say, let's bring this up here. I'd say slow down. Uh, you know, ideally, I want you to get you 34 miles an hour. Now, first, that's going to seem like really hard. Uh, improve the power band, which is what the articles and everything, and then move around. I'm going to show you. That's kind of like my bouncy, trouncy, tigger the tiger. Ideally, Greg wants to improve his glide. Well, Greg's also not a teenager. So, and neither am I. So one of the things you guys want to work on that you can do when you do your dry land practice or everything, stretch your ankles and calves out a little bit. You can do that while you're watching TV in your man cave, while you got a handle hooked up. If you've ever took your heel, dropped it on the edge of a step and just let it stretch your calf out, that feels so good. And one of the things as you get older is tight, tight 
tight calves and hamstrings cause back injuries. They reduce your ankle flexibility. It reduces your ability to glide. I'm not saying Greg doesn't have good flexibility, but let's take. if you want free help, I'd tell you here's the things you want to do. Spend a little bit of time. It literally could take two minutes a day and just stretch out your calves a little bit. You'll feel a lot better. You'll be a lot healthier for your knee, for your knees and your ankles, and it'll help you glide better, and it'll help you slow down. Now, the power band, which we're talking about, is... Um, is the ability of getting the pull through the hips. Now, unfortunately, Greg didn't use something like this to video because I'd like to see his entire body, and this is blocking me from seeing. I'm pretty sure that for Greg's flexibility, it kind of looks like his shoulders are pinched back and his chest is out a little bit. His hips are towards the handle, and they're kind of in the right direction, but I think he could pinch more. So, I specifically, after watching this, instead of just making this video right away, I went down to my dock, showed how to improve that power band, how to get into it, how to pinch with your hips more aggressively using your abs, your low back, and pushing your like your gut into your quads. That's on that whole separate video. I'm putting it in this blog post when I post this. That's going to help. You need to feel that as you're coming off the water, you always want to hit your che checklist, head up, shoulder roll, meat hook, power band, soft knees, soft hands. Now, one thing that it looks like to me is Greg is not exactly what I would call soft in his position here. He's not. I've seen way worse, and he gets more relaxed as he goes a little bit, but you also see how he's getting knocked around even in what looks like decent water. You've got to, what you really want to do is get improve your glide now if you can't the one thing i say that greg's got really good going for him if you guys saw my article on bouncy trouncy tick of the tiger uh, even with this boom in my wet in my view and i can see if i dropped a plumb line from the edge of his butt straight down greg has the correct resistance a small golfer clap from winter haven florida for greg so, uh, you know, that is awesome. That is what's keeping him safe. Even if his glide's not perfect, even if his power band's not perfect, even if his shoulder roll and meat hook is not perfect, he does have his resistance set. So if you guys saw that latest email on uh, Bouncy Trouncy Tigger the Tiger and setting the right amount of resistance with my bucket theory of resistance, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, Leave me a comment. In fact, no matter what happens, leave me a comment. Share this. Any questions, I'll link you right to the stuff if you can't find it. I've got so many articles and videos that are free that are awesome for you guys. I mean, I understand if you can't find them. I have to Google them myself, uh, and I'm trying to make it easier for you guys. So anyway, Greg, you're going to have to pinch your butt out a little more aggressively here. Then I need you to do the, the bouncy, trouncy, tigger, the tiger thing. you got to relax your hands. Then start breathing instead of holding your breath for 10, 15 seconds at a time. I'm not saying you're doing it, but you know that that's how I... You hold your resistance, relax your hands, and then get a little bouncy trouncy in your knees. And that will allow your feet to flatten out. Because right now, Greg's got great resistance, good enough position. He just needs to get a little more relaxed. It's hard to get relaxed if you feel like you're going to fall. That's what Greg's telling me. And he's also had... Uh, it looks like p potential rotator cuff uh, fall. If you fall on backwards barefooting, here's a PSA. Definitely don't hold on to the handle. Number two, slow down so you don't fall so much. Greg's not working on back one foots here, so 35 for him should be well within the range, and it should help him relax a little more. The boom I like here because I would say... With the boom, he's got a boom extension right here, our B110 boom extension, which look out, he's real nice out of the spray. So Greg's the master at having, he's got some very cool barefoot boats. I think he's got multiple, but this is a barefoot nautique, I'm pretty sure. Very, very cool. He's got one of our booms here on a boat, which if you don't have a boom, leave me a message. You need a boom. But, and he's got a little extra rope here. Awesome, awesome setups. And this boom, the tip of this, I would say is, you know, six to seven feet off the water. Still, that's pretty darn good, at least, you know, while the boat's up to speed. So those are my tips. Slow down. I know you guys maybe are tiring of hearing that. 
improve your power band. Check out that video, how to pinch in the middle, practice holding a handle in your gut like I show in the uh, supplemental video I'm going to show you, and then move around. Bouncy, trouncy, tick of the tiger. But another thing you can do, if you, do, if you, don't, if you don't feel like you can press, you're going to be able to compress in your knees and your hips. If that makes you feel like you're going to fall, still go through the bouncy, trouncy steps of breathe, relax your grip, Work your power band. You can't lose your position. And then practice moving your feet in and out. You don't have to go super narrow like you're doing a back to front. Just if you're, like he's wider than shoulder width, practice going in four or six inches out, in, out. Just any movement you do is going to get you kind of out of the mentality of I'm just hanging on to survive to I'm going to own this position. So those are my tips. Uh, God bless you guys. Please leave me a comment. Please forward this and tell other people to go to thefootersedge.com, get in my free newsletter. And if you want a video analysis, follow the guidelines I set on how to get a free video analysis during all this quarantine stuff. And God bless you guys and expect a miracle.